everybody. This is Chad Perkins. Welcome out to another episode of the Chad and Todd podcast. And in this episode, we're going to look at a feature primarily for Windows users of Photoshop CS3. But I think that many others out there will be able to benefit from this other than just them. The focus of this tutorial is going to be on a little feature called Adobe Gamma. And Adobe Gamma is used as a monitor calibration and characterization tool. I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. But the thing is, is that Adobe changed the way that Adobe Gamma installs with CS3. So as I've been looking around message boards and stuff like that, I hear a bunch of people whining about, oh, they removed Adobe Gamma from CS3, and I've heard other stuff about how it's not compatible with Vista, and blah, 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 whatever. It's all not true, folks. It's all right here, and I'm going to show you how to get it working in Vista. Now, if you are on a Mac and you're still watching this, you kind of don't need the Adobe Gamma, and it's not going to be on your system, and here's why. You have the Display Calibration Assistant in your system preferences, so you really don't need Adobe Gamma like we Windows people do. So here's how we get Adobe Gamma back. Now, again, it's not going to be installed and able to use as it has been with previous versions of Adobe software. So what we need to do is go to this folder. In your hard drive, go to your Program Files folder, and then in the Program Files folder, you'll find a folder called Common Files. In that folder, you'll find a folder called Control Panels. Now, I realize this is a little game of cat and mouse here, trying to hunt and find this thing, but it is here. Now, in this Control Panels folder, you'll find a file called Adobe Gamma.cpl. This is Adobe Gamma. So already we're debunking the lies that are out there on message boards. Notice I am on Windows Vista here, and I have never installed CS2 software on this machine, ever. So, again, it's here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this Adobe Gamma.cpl file, and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go over to the System32 folder. You'll find that in your hard drive, then go to the Windows folder, and then go to the System32 folder, and then what you want to do is paste that file in here. You see I've done that already. Now, just a little word of warning here. When you're in the Windows folder or when you're in the System32 folder, be really careful because these are your system files. One false move and your computer could be a piece of trash, even more than it currently is if it's a piece of trash already. So now, if I go to my Start menu, go to my Control Panel, then I'm going to go to my Classic View here so I can see all of the items on my Control Panel, and looky here, Adobe Gamma on Vista. Suck it. There it is. I'm going to double click on Adobe Gamma. And once I open up Adobe Gamma, you'll see the good old familiar Adobe Gamma interface we've all known and loved with this wannabe Chiquita banana lady, etc., etc. Now, that's really the whole point of the tutorial, but since we're here, let me just show you how I use Adobe Gamma. Again, Adobe Gamma is used to do two things. It's used to calibrate your monitor, which actually changes your monitor, and it's used to characterize it. In case you're new to the world of color management, what characterization does is that it describes the color of your monitor. This information can then be used by other programs such as InDesign or Photoshop when displaying colors. So calibration is really only part of it. Characterization is really what you're after here if you're going for an accurate color managed workflow. So I'm going to click on step by step and click next. And I don't want to save over this profile, so I'm going to give this a unique name. How about Flying Ninjas? <laughs> That'll work. Then I'm going to hit Next. And it's going to give you a little description about what's going to happen. So I'm going to click on Next. And I can select the phosphors on my monitor here. I'm just going to leave that alone. Leave it as is. I'm going to click Next. Now here's where we really get into what's going on with this Adobe Gamma here. Now here's the trick. You want to kind of blur your eyes a little bit, and you want to get it so that the center square kind of blends in with what's around it. So if I do that, then this little square in the center is a little bit too bright. So I might want to take this down a little bit until it blends in better with the background. Now I could also uncheck View Single Gamma Only. This is really good, especially if you have a color cast on your monitor. If everything looks a little yellowish or a little bit too blue, you can do that same correction with each individual color channel. Now this area is pretty important too. We have the Gamma value. Now you notice that we have Windows Default and Macintosh Default. You notice that they are very different. If I go back and forth here, you'll notice that Windows, even though the gamma is 2.2 and Mac is 1.8, 
the gamma, the intensity of the gamma, or rather the level of gamma, actually makes the screen darker as it gets bigger. So what that means in plain English is that the Windows default, even though it's a higher number, is darker than the Mac default. Now what that means in a workflow setting is that if you're playing around on Windows with your art and then you go over to a Mac, it's going to look very, very bright. So what I usually do is I just manually type in 2.0 here and I just kind of split the difference between Mac and Windows. That way if I take my art to Mac, it gets a little bit brighter and if I take it to a regular PC, it gets a little bit darker, but no big deal. That's essentially what you need to know about Adobe Gamma here. And you can set your hardware white point. You can even measure your hardware white point with a few tests here. They're going to ask you about which gray looks better, etc., etc. And then you're going to go ahead and save this monitor profile. Now, if you're really freakish about color, I recommend going through these same steps once a month or so. And that, in a nutshell, is Adobe Gamma. It is here in CS3, and it is in Windows Vista, no matter what the bloggers are telling you. Now, even though this is a real uh, pretty good program, it's no substitute for a real third-party solution. You're not going to get super accurate color calibration here because you're using your own eyes. So this is not a really high-end program here, but it's a freebie. And it's still better than what you get with your video card. Like when you get your video card, there's typically you know, these little programs that install with it that allow you to adjust the brightness or color of your monitor or what have you. And it's definitely better than that. And it characterizes, which again is the point. You're creating an ICC profile that defines the color of your monitor. So that is Adobe Gamma in Windows Vista for CS3.